Well, welcome to today's Tuesday talk on exploring subnational climate governance policies in the Brazil's legal Amazon by Luisa Montoya Raniero. Luisa is one of the fellows funded by the International Climate Protection Program of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation in Germany and is currently hosted by the ISS. Prior to joining the Institute, she has been working among others on climate and forest governance policies. And in addition, she has been working as coordinator for corporate social responsibility affairs in the private sector. On the topic she has been working on where among the others, sustainable sourcing policy applied to the grains in Amazon and Cerrado biomes, good agricultural practices and community engagement programs. Her academic, her academic background is in environmental studies and sustainability management. Just before we start, as usual, we will record the session. And now, please, Luisa, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Achim, for the nice introduction. Thank you, all of you, for being here, actually, and welcome. So I will share my screen as expected. <laughs> So let's try again. Mm. No. Yes, are you seeing this in the presentation yes. mode or? No, not yet in the presentation mode. No, so. Not yet, but we see your screen. Okay, so let's try again. Why it doesn't work right now? When you need, it works. <laughs> uh, yes, maybe? Yes, no, yes. Very good. OK, so as I already said, actually, today we will talk about subnational climate governance policies and the Brazilian Amazon as an important tool for the Amazon rainforest conservation and for the local development. And with a specific focus in uh, Hondonia state, we will understand this a little bit uh, more later. So let's start what I hope will be an um, interesting conversation. Uh, please feel free to interrupt me and then bring your considerations during the presentation or if you prefer we can also do this uh, in the end of my talk. So on the content of the presentation, I will uh, give a short introduction to the relevance of the Amazon rainforest and its current context from the Brazilian side. Then I will move uh, to the pre project proposal itself and speak about main objective, methodology, expected results, and yeah, in the end, final consideration. Maybe I should have put it like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, likely most of you are already familiar with the Amazon rainforest, but even though I wanted to bring this map here to give a better idea and visualization of what we are talking about and yeah, the Amazon rainforest is part of, or it covers nine countries with a total area around 5,5 million square kilometers, which 60% of this territory is in Brazil. So on uh, the relevance of the Amazon rainforest, uh, we can mention that it's the largest and most well-preserved rainforest on earth with an incredible biodiversity, 10% of all known species, for example, and still with a huge potential not yet discovered, actually. So it's also important to say that it's a global player when it comes to climate regulation, holding for, for example, 20% of the world's fresh water, and then extremely important for the regime, uh, rain regimes with its flying rivers, what actually enable crops across South America and even in the United States, for example. Yeah, so the Amazon is also home of over 33 million people, which include hundreds of different indigenous groups, more than 80 languages are spoken there, hundreds of dialects, 
Yeah, so a real uh, pole of human culture, we could say. Uh, but now I'd like to zoom uh, from the entire uh, Amazon rainforest to the Brazilian portion of, uh, and for what we call the Brazil's legal Amazon. So actually the Brazil's legal Amazon is a social geographic division and also involves this uh, magic number uh, nine states uh, of Brazil with an area of around 5 million square kilometers and a population also around uh, 24 million people. So all the Brazilian uh, Amazon rainforest is inside this uh, green area here. Um, with that said, I would like to draw your attention to what has been happening in the Brazilian portion of the largest rainforest on Earth. Um, this is often on the news and articles of the global press, but, and yeah, as you know, it's not a process that has only started now. I mean, fires, deforestations, and everything we, we see. But given the context and the scientific information available on climate change, uh, the recent years are especially worrying, I, I would say. Um, over the years, actually, the profile of Brazil's GNG emissions has been uh, directly related to the dynamics of deforestation in the Amazon. So if you have a look uh, in such profile, you find out that land use change is accountable for around 45% yeah, of our emissions. Uh, and then in this graph here, you can have a better idea about the deforestation rates in the Amazon rainforest um, in the last uh, three decades. And after a especially horrible peak in 2004, we can realize a significant decrease process in the deforestation rates from 2005 to 2012. But in 2013, the rate starts slowly to increase again. And then the last two years, I would say, yeah, really disappointing or critical results. So during 2005 and 2012, we really did what could say a good job. So why could we not keep like that or, or improve the rates? I mean, decrease the rates. So I think that everybody uh, agreed that the challenge of sustainable development for the Amazon region is clearly not of a simple solution. But the idea I want to explore here is that the dichotomy of nature conservation versus social and economic development or poverty alleviation, uh, if you wish, is outdated or as uh, written in a study of the European Parliament actually from May last year, even false. I, I would say outdated, but okay. Um, <clears throat> so we are talking maybe about a change of mindset and the first idea behind such change is realize or understand that the standing forest is not an obstacle to development. Uh, it's quite the opposite actually. So it's about profit from the standing forest through its assets, environmental services, and trade of um, forest biodiversity based products, for example. And with that, being able to reduce the pressure uh, we already um, have good examples and initiatives through or across the Amazon. But uh, the question here is uh, how could we scale up them and work with a consistent and long term horizon? Um, I see that an important part of the answer relies on public policies on climate change, governance biodiversity and the economy. Uh, with that in mind, in my research, I will explore the subnational climate governance policies for the Brazil's legal Amazon, based on 
three main uh, pillars. So the first one, established legal framework on climate change. What is uh, extremely important to bring clarity, social control mechanisms, participation, transparency, and mainly legal certainty. Um, yeah, we will explore this uh, later on. Uh, a second pillar to mention is cross-borders, co cross-border, sorry, cooperation and partnerships. So technological innovation, scientific research that could add value to the standing forest and help to bring income to people living in and around the forest. And then the third pillar uh, would be a bioforestry based social and economic agenda in a socially inclusive basis. So really important to work these three dimensions uh, together. And in the end of the process, I expect to be able to identify and suggest practical recommendations of new opportunities of co-creation process and partnerships between Germany and Rondonia state mainly, but also provide subsidies and analytical material to further approach and research actions in the other Amazonian states. Um, among the expected results, I mentioned the elaboration of a legal framework overview of the subnational climate policies for the nine states of Brazil's legal Amazon. I will specify this in the next page. Um, a map of the online channels supporting community-based markets initiatives that offer forest biodiversity products originated in the Brazilian legal Amazon. And yeah, finally, I expect to publish those findings. So regarding the legal framework, so here I will cover this, I intend to cover at least these aspects here. So for the nine states, a very broad overview. So which is the main legal milestones for each state? So there is a state law in place on climate change governance. If yes, which is the main objective of it? which is the focus, it is adaptation, mitigation, a mix of it, or what? And then uh, also analyze the governance of it itself. I mean, which is the bodies that compose uh, the make the decision-making process? How is the scientific uh, information taken into account in this uh, process of decision-making? Uh, the gender issue, uh, who, uh, yeah, who are participating in, this, in those uh, bodies and process. So here, this idea of governance, when I'm talking about institutional arrangements, and then, okay, we have possibly a state, uh, state law, clear objectives or not, we will see. Institutional arrangement and how we uh, implement such policy on the ground. So then we will go to the programs that are planned in such uh, laws, as well to the financial, economic, and institutional instruments. And then finally, how the international cooperation is addressed in such law. So, okay, but then it's very important to remember that the Amazon region is very heterogeneous and that the nine states that compose the Brazil's legal Amazon are also then very diverse. So which, from which Amazon are we talking about? So in my analysis on the state policy on climate change, I will cover those topics here that you are seeing in those boxes, but actually due to exactly um, Due to the complexity of the Amazon region, the time that I have to carry on the project, that is uh, one year, we will see this in the timeline. And due to my previous experience in Rondonia state, where I've lived previously, Germany, uh, yeah, I, I decided to focus uh, 
the analysis, as I already mentioned it, in the in Hondonian state. So we are talking on a state with an area of almost 240,000 square meters, so comparable to the territory of Romania, for example, or five times Croatia. Uh, it, it is one of the states that most of the forests in the Amazon, it's not the, the top one or two, but it's one of the most. And even though the state still has approximately uh, 11.5 million hectares of conserved forests, around from which 70% in protected areas. So you can we can see how important those areas are. And a population around uh, 2 million or almost 2 million inhabitants. OK, but then how are we, I intend to do such analysis? So let's talk about methodology and timeline. So the starting point is obviously a literature review. English, Portuguese, and Spanish references uh, find, found in uh, Web of Science and the Scopus, for example. Uh, then, in addition to the IASS Potsdam network in Germany, I will also uh, profit from my own local network in Brazil and conduce, in Rondonia more specifically, and conduce semi structure interviews with the stakeholders involved or responsible uh, for running the existing climate governance uh, in Rondonia State. So we are talking about government representatives, indigenous people, traditional communities, um, the academy, third sector, private sector, as industries, associations, for example. Yeah, and then in the end, I expect to find out what are uh, the main perceived priorities by the ones responsible for running the climate state policy and how could we turn those priorities into opportunities uh, of to new projects of cross-border cooperation so um, uh, about the timeline then yeah during april and may i carried on um literature review so this month I start the interviewing list. So who are the ones that I want and should contact, the names and yeah, uh, which um, company or organization and so on. And elaboration of questions. So which are the, the, the questions to be done? And then August, September interviews. And then in the last uh, three months of the year, analyze what I what I have and mapping the online channels as already uh, mentioned about this trade of bioforestry uh, based products. And then in the next year, uh, the two months, January and February, put the results together and uh, hopefully uh, write an article on that. Yeah, uh, finally, I'd like to highlight that uh, actions at bilateral level that circumvent the national governments and predicted direct assistance at state level in Amazonia has uh, have been successful. Um, it's not me saying that, but I agree, but um, uh, it's not me. Uh, this is part of a very interesting uh, study actually containing an analysis uh, made by the European Parliament on Brazil and the Amazon rainforest from last year. So I expect that my research and findings could somehow um, corroborate or even contribute to this vision and to potential future corporations on the forest biodiverse economy and climate agenda uh, in the Brazilian Amazon. Thank you very much. I think I will uh, stop to, to share my, my screen. First of all, thank you very much, Luisa, for the presentation and the overview on your project. And I think we can just right start to the round of questions, comments, or any additions. If you have anything you would like to um, ask, I will raise your hand or write it in the chat. And I see that Carlos has already risen his hand. Please, Carlos. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Luisa. First of all, thank you very much. Thank you. I think Cecilia was uh, has raised her hand also, but I, I'm not sure she was uh, before me, and so I don't know if she wants to come first. Comes first to come first. You can go first, Carlos. I was clapping, but uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Because, uh, Sorry. Because Luis and I, we are working together, so yes, I will uh, leave the... the floor for you because I think uh, yes, she <laughs> it's really good for for her research to listen to you. So I can uh, come later. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Uh, uh, Luis and I had the chance to, to also to speak. Uh, I don't know about uh, a couple of weeks ago, and so in a. Uh, I'm glad to, to see you here and presenting your ideas. And uh, uh, it's, it's, as you said, it's a very challenging uh, to, to speak about in the Amazon. We have not only diversity in terms of uh, ecosystems by the diversity in different states, but uh, the political context and the local context are absolutely different as well. And uh, I have two, two questions for you uh, related to, uh, first of all, uh, how uh, uh, you you see the uh, you you will check uh, your analysis on the policy framework based on literature review and also on the, based on the interviews you carry on and the real world for example uh, we all uh, just recently in the last few weeks uh, the, the state of Hondonia and the government of the state of Hondonia approved the, a reduction uh, of 219 thousand hectares in the state level protected areas and so everything go, absolutely goes against and everything that we, you you are ref, referring to in your analysis and it was the largest uh, reduction so far happening at a state level in terms of protected areas ever in the, the Brazilian Amazon and so just as an example so the, we, we might have good policies in paper but uh, in the real world there's uh, lots of things happening and that goes against it. And uh, in a brief questions on interviews, um, would, uh, would you include uh, uh, local communities, organizations, and indigenous people's organizations that are based in the state of Rondonia also, uh, that are usually, uh, some, many of them are very critical of uh, on the, the policies established by the state level government as well as Bolsonaro's policies. Thank you. Yeah, should I, may I answer? Um, yeah, right. Then we go to the next one, right? Or it will be easier, I think, to remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, Carlos, and thank you for, for the question. Yeah, the first one, I think it's um, more complicated about how I, in I intend to, not exactly convince, because I think it's not the point, and you didn't use that, that word actually, but how I put together the findings and the real life in Rondonia, right? Or even in Brazil. So I, I was thinking, or my expectation is actually, as I already said, is profit a little bit from the local network that I built there while we're living there in the last three, year, three years. So, um, I would contact them directly and also actually the main channel that I see is this for the state forum on climate change that is already regulated. Uh, it's not really as far as I know are not being uh, it's not running, but it is there is a law, there is a decree on that people that should participate are also uh, listed on this. Um, decree so i i suppose or i expect to have room to present those uh, findings in this uh, space of participation actually uh also share in other forums that are not only in rondonia but as for example the G, uh, gcf yeah task force so this uh work group that is already uh, or that involves the governors of the nine states of Rondona and that are uh, carrying on projects with, uh, in a regional basis actually, in this uh, B window of uh, NORAD sponsorship from Norway. So yeah, I, I think that I will find to explore uh, those 
uh, channels in terms of being listened or yeah i don't know about the results but i expect to to help to give voice to this part of the the ones that are speaking um in favor of the bio economy agenda and uh climate governance policies and the other the other question was uh was I, I forgot actually I wrote this forum. Just the contracts, the uh, contrast between the the policy framework and the let's say uh, the reduction in the first station, uh, the protected areas, for example, the, yeah. and uh, how you check the the, the even if you have a good policy framework uh, with a, a very strong uh, uh, elements there yeah. and mechanism and what's happening yeah. on the ground and then the policies that goes against it, uh, the objectives of our climate change policy. Yeah, thank you for this refresh. <laughs> um, well, the climate, the state uh, policy of Rondonia is from 2018. So actually December 2018. So it's uh, new, we could say. We cannot actually uh, build a direct connection between the rates, the deforestation rates and the governance policies. And then I'm not also saying that have that having a state policy means that we will reduce the deforestation rates. Uh, uh, it's, it's a possibility and it's desirable, but it's not a mandatory connection. So I think that I will need more time to try to build more time in terms of uh, running the state policy on the ground and then uh, trying to build this more clear, uh, this clearer uh, connection between the deforestation rates and um, the policy itself. Thanks, I got now Flavio and then Alexandra on my list. Flavio, please. Uh, thank you, Achim. Thank you, uh, Luisa, very much for your presentation. First of all, thank you for the uh, layout. It was a very beautifully put together presentation uh, mm -hmm. in a way I cannot do even if I try very hard. So that's very good. Um, so I would like to make just a, a general question concerning uh, the cooperation idea that you put forth uh, when you mentioned Hondonia and Germany. So how do you see uh, any possible conflict between the federal government in Brazil and the state and local governments when it comes to thinking about this governance of the Amazon using para-diplomatic behavior. For example, yeah, Germany cooperating with Hondonia or maybe Germany cooperating with some other states in Brazil or in the Brazilian Amazon or some uh, city governments. Uh, do you see a tension there between how the uh, federal government see those uh, uh, types of um, relations uh, or is it something that the federal government prefer to turn a blind eye to because sometimes I think and that's really a question because I don't know uh, as long as it's not damaging the interests in the image of the Brazilian government so maybe they might turn a blind eye to that or are they critical of, of the states dealing directly with other countries or other entities uh, without making that go through the federal government before and again, thank you for the presentation. It was really good. Okay, thank you for the compliments and for the question. Um, yeah, um, there is uh, a tension, I would agree, but, but it's not a uh, um, total obstacle from my point of view. Also, I don't know exactly the answer, but I can suspect or yeah, have an idea on that. And exactly because of the national context and sensitive moment that we are facing in the Amazon region, that is why one of the reasons that I decided to use the subnational approach in terms of being more uh, feasible maybe or yeah, possible to really cooperate together instead of uh, in a, federal government basis. And actually we already seen some uh, very good initiatives and projects between 
uh, organization in a country such as Germany, actually, or other countries uh, directly with the states. So I, I understand that it could be not that easy, but also I would go through this, this direction, actually, instead of the big picture nowadays, exactly because we are facing those challenges there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Then I would have Alexandra on my list, please. Yeah, but still I was thinking of Cecilia. I don't know if Cecilia wanted to say something. And... Okay, I overlooked you. I'm sorry. So then Cecilia perhaps first. Well, I was holding myself here to not jump in the questions because I think uh, uh, Carlos' question and the Flavio also, it's something, of course, that uh, comes to my mind. And uh, I, I really like that they, they asked this to you, Luisa. Yeah, congrats for the presentation. I also like it very much. And uh, one thing that maybe I would uh, just complement with uh, Flavio's question is about the right to the city and how that is related, for example, not just with the climate agenda, but also with the SDG. How, how do you see that? And, and then uh, talking about the Rondonia, because Rondonia is very uh, interesting state on my view, because like uh, all the compositions and the constituency of uh, um, uh, the forest protection, but also the infrastructure, the agribusiness, and these uh, kind of uh, pressure uh, related to agribusiness. So, because I'm not, I don't, I, I confess to you, I'm really looking forward to learn with you more about Condonia. Uh, and the, maybe my question also for you is like, uh, how do you see these groups, how they are playing a role uh, maybe in your research, for example, uh, what are the pressures for creating policy and the law from these uh, sectors, agribusiness and the uh, climate activists, for example, environmental activists groups or indigenous groups? What is the relation right now? Like it's a state that's more like a Bolsonaro support, uh, supportive. Uh, what are the, the struggles that you see now between these groups in the in Rondonia uh, to carry this agenda that you are trying to engage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Thank you again. Um, about uh, the SDGs, uh, yeah, you said you mentioned the cities, right? Um, the, the, I mean, not only the rainforest itself, but yeah, indeed, it would be not the focus of uh, such analysis. Um, but even though I see, um, a significant adherence to the SDGs with the project, since we're talking about climate agenda and uh, kind of also poverty alleviation or development, sustainable development and so on. But especially on Rondonia, I, yeah, from my experience on the ground, I would say that, yes, it's challenging uh, in terms of the agribusiness associations and organizations there. The, the, um, but also on the, on the other hand, they were very participative and willing to listen at least the the time that I was there, we could uh, connect with them uh, in a very, um, how can I say, maybe a profitable way, or at least in, uh, we could respect each other and listen to the other opinions, what is basically the first step, I, I think. And again, I will return to this uh, state forum because this is the participation body and uh, the room that are given to people to participate. And when I say people, I can specify, yes, representatives from indigenous people, for example, they hold three, um, three uh, chairs in this uh, forum. Uh, and in a total of, uh, I don't remember right now if it was uh, 17 or 20. I mean the total, but three was specifically to indigenous people, another to smallholders, farmers, and or extractive extractive communities. Um, of uh, of course the the agribusiness or private sector and especially the agribusiness had also a chair there as well, 
the different levels of govern uh, government. So I, I think that this is kind of the soul of the of the, the law since it will allow democracy and participation for people that are willing to. And it was something that we really were um, doing pressure to, to have this picture while we were articulating and trying to build such uh, regulations on the, this law. The, another thing that I could mention is the also the first three decree that, that regulated the law were exactly the, the state forum as this participatory uh, room, uh, the safe, social and environmental safeguarding, exactly because the importance of it for Rondonia state, and uh, the fund, the state fund uh, to being able to collect or receive uh, investments to run the the policy on the ground. So, yeah, I, I don't know exactly if I could address all the topics because indeed it's really challenging to, to speak about this such complex and heterogeneous, um, um, yeah, context. But I think I would uh, highlight those, those topics here. Yeah. Thanks. I would then have Alexandra on my list, unless I have overlooked somebody else. <laughs> if uh, that's the case, then Alexandra, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, also thank you, Luisa, for my part, for your uh, pres presentation. And I agree with just your last sentence that it's a very complex issue and a very, actually a very ambitious uh, research agenda to, uh, to study. And I was wondering if you're planning like in the process of your research to uh, also scale it down, maybe on some case studies. Um, and then what, what I have encountered is like this, um, the current uh, political developments, uh, which uh, has of course been like a, a certain rupture with uh, what has been happening before, like on the uh, national, on the federal uh, state level with the Bolsonaro government. So I was wondering if maybe you pick out um, some cases where you find, for example, examples for how bioeconomy was well implemented in the area uh, where you can draw from like conclusions. Uh, would you uh, want to focus them on like a former uh, times or now on the current times? And then how, how would you put that into context? Yeah, thank you, Alexandra. Um, yes, uh, I think that uh, regarding how can I put this uh, together or have I scale down the, the analysis. Indeed, I had at this uh, discussion actually with Carlos a little bit and uh, Cecilia are exactly because yes, we agree that it's kind of a very broad and ambitious uh, research to, to, to be carried on in one year. And actually, it was exactly the why I decided to focus in Rondonia State. It's still not that, um, I mean, it's still broad, but uh, the idea is just have an overview of, about the other states in terms of the law, the state law that are, that exists, and then focus for Rondonia. And yeah, regarding the bioeconomy projects or the initiatives, I actually could uh, even mention a very interesting one that um, is in, is GIZ in cooperation with the, the Brazilian government. Actually, it was a project in Pará, Amazonas, Acre, and Amapá, the green market and sustainable um, consumption, exactly to trying to map and foster the initiatives that has the bio um products as um as products to 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 be traded not only in brazil but abroad so and now i know that they are in the second stage of it so why not think about something similar for rondonia and then i will mention one of the project that i was involved with there that called amazonia achieve so it's exactly uh online channel to trade biodiversity products. And also kind of, uh, we started with Rondonia, but then we, we 
open it after 10 months or one year to the other states. So we know that there are products, very interesting one, uh, feasible ones, but, and, but who are the people and where they, when are the people that are trading such projects such as, I don't know, we are talking about the Babasu oil or um, we are talking about Anjiroba or Burichi or, I mean, we can a range of possibilities, but we don't know how to find them. So the first step is make those people and those products visible, put them on the map, uh, literally. So we could, I think that we could also think about make those initiatives uh, stronger and uh, with a long-term basis, not only very, I mean, a project with an issue, uh, begin and middle and end, but also something that we could just, uh, mm, that we could have as a more perennial basis. So, but yeah, just a, an example that I would mention these kinds of initiatives that you suggested. Yeah, I think that it really makes sense indeed. Thanks. Are there any further questions, comments, additions right now? Ah, Carlos, please. It's um, muted. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ariana. Uh, uh, briefly, uh, uh, a question and maybe a suggestion. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, since uh, you'll be analyzing the, 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 the whole policy framework and the governance, and the forum is part of this governance. If you reach uh, to a conclusion that the forum is not <laughs> very operational, uh, it might not be the best forum for you to deliver the results of your, or to, to share the results of your research after the end of this, this year. And so just to, to consider that if uh, I've tried to, to find the information on, from the latest meetings from the forum I, I, and I found on something only in January last year. I don't know if something happened uh, since then. And, um, and so just to, to uh, have that in mind of when all these, uh, I will share with them. It, it, uh, if you, uh, this is your objective, it might be, uh, uh, you might have to, to share with the individual organizations rather than with uh, the forum itself. Uh, and so uh, it, 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 it's very important, in my opinion, to since this would be connected to the impact you want to achieve with your project. And uh, um, a suggestion, uh, it might be interesting for you uh, to consider interviewing also people from the international cooperation, maybe GIZ, uh, NORAD, among uh, others, uh -huh. they might have an interesting uh, uh, views on uh, where Honduran states uh, in relation to their own policies. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. Very appreciated. And actually, yeah, maybe I was not, maybe not, I was not clear enough in this uh, contact list that I would like to do. But indeed, international organizations are um, uh, are in the uh, in this uh, list that I want to, to speak, and exactly the GIZ, for example, that you've mentioned, or uh, other organizations here in Germany, or even uh, in other countries too. So yeah, I, I expect to do so. But uh, thank you for the suggestion, and also about the forum, exactly. I, I see clearly that uh, it's not actually, I, I'm not saying that forum is there, it's, uh, working in a very good basis is not the point but only that there is this channel and it is one of the possibilities but indeed doesn't doesn't work or yeah to to share the findings there if it's not uh, really operational so yeah i will pay attention on that yeah thanks when i had shri on my list next please thank you akim uh, thank you, Luigi, for a very nice presentation. So in one of the slides, it was very interesting that uh, from the last five to six years, this def deforestation rate is increasing. So what is the main reason? Is that the natural cause 
like forest fire or it is a man-made uh, like illegal logging or something like that right so and you also talk about as far as i understand you'll be doing this uh, multi-stakeholder -stake analysis am i right uh, are you only fo focusing on particular stakeholder or different stakeholder so in order to implement this governance mm -hmm. uh, you should uh, um, uh, you should uh, i mean have a conversation with uh, i mean interview with the uh, government official uh, I mean, people living over there, private sector, uh, maybe uh, climate activists, right? So what kind of tool are you planning to use to do that kind of analysis? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Yeah, indeed, you were paying attention on the presentation. In this graph, we had this uh, kind of fluctuating or very different uh, deforestation rates. And I will start actually answering about the about the part that it was uh, that we were doing a good job, and then I will explain maybe uh, why it's not happening or how it's changed. It. So bet uh, between 2004 and yeah, 2005 actually, 2004 was the terrible uh, peak. 2005 to 12, uh, 2012, uh, I would mention some some elements, some factor that could explain why this decrease and the element that are needed when you want to have this trend of deforestation and not that trend. So I was mentioned briefly law uh, enforcement uh, of Amazonian policies. And in this period, we, can, we, had, we could mention exactly a very specific one and important that was the action plan for uh, prevention and control of deforestation in the League of Amazon, what we call in Portuguese PPCDAM. So it was launched in 2004, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. So combine it with uh, improvement of institutional capacity, for example. And we are not observing this right now, exactly the opposite actually. So we are seeing the, that the governance for the Amazon is weakened more and more. Um, so also during this period, uh, I mean, 2005, 2012, we had uh, the creation or um, the, the delimitation of new national parks and conservation units. So what also important to protect areas and yeah, to avoid deforestation or at least reduce the pressure on the, of deforestation. Also cooperation between governments and the, the federal government and state government could also be uh, a factor that helped it to, to those numbers. And even coalitions among different stakeholders or various uh, stakeholders, as you said, including the private sector. So we are talking about the soya moratorium, for example, that also uh, played a role here. But mainly, and then I would come to the to the end maybe of uh, or to the central idea of your uh, question i would mention political will so this is also fundamental when you want to implement or change context or situations that are being that they are coming from a process and then you you really need to to be willing to do such um, changes and policy on on the ground so yeah, and then we also could mention maybe the main drivers of deforestation in, the, in Brazil. Uh, very shortly, it would be lots of them, but I would mention the forest, uh, the the cattle farming, agriculture. So mainly soya bean, uh, mono agriculture actually, uh, logging not only illegal logging but also fires, mining, so road construction, constructions and dams. So infrastructure works that are needed, but maybe uh, not in the way that, that they were uh, done, or maybe the environmental part what, and social impacts were kind of neglect, neglect, how can I say this word? Was not taken enough uh, into account. So the consequences of those uh, huge uh, constructions. Other relevant challenge, land tenure uh, rights, that could lead us to land speculations, conflicts, violence. So there is a lot of factors on the plate and in the plate that we could mention here. I'm not 
uh, I don't have the intention to exhaust the list, but I think that those elements would be an uh, interesting uh, starting point to talk about this um, deforestation rates. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I got Isadora next off the list, please. Hi, Luisa. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for your presentation. And I just wanted to ask um, to be a, a little bit more clear on um, your idea to also see, like, to research the bilateral cooperation between Germany and Brazil in this sense. And so, how would you approach the the German side? So, I didn't really understand how um, how you're going to make it. So, the method you use and what is the what is the why did you decide for that? I mean, I can imagine, but I'm just asking. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Zadara. Happy to see to see you here. Uh, yeah. Well, Germany is a partner of uh, from Brazil. Uh, I mean, across the years already, long time, we really had uh, very good examples of projects together. We could uh, mention in early years the um, the Red Plus, uh, for example, project with uh, in Acre or no, it was in Mato Grosso KFW. Uh, uh, KVV. Yeah, bank, for example, or even projects from GIZ and other organizations. So I intend to, first of all, approach them in their interviews. And uh, depending on the findings of the interviews, then really uh, explore <laughs> such opportunities that could come up uh, from the interviews and from the works that I've already read. So. The idea is to contact them and also, as I said, profit from the IASS network also here in Germany. So I, I think that I would go to, to this uh, way and highlight the interview process to establish this connection. Uh, when, I th when I think about new opportunities of collaboration partnerships, one of the most uh, interesting points or issues that come to my mind is uh, new projects uh, involving um, the, this agenda in different uh, states or levels in Brazil. So, uh, but as, as I told you, I, I think that I need to, to collect, first of all, the ideas and impressions from the, uh, from the German side also. I don't want to bring already, or I don't want to, present them with possibilities and solutions, but also try to see which this, um, I wouldn't say together, because it would be too, I mean, naive for me, I think, but it's a process that I will build through the, the, the project. Thanks. Um, we have a few minutes left. Are there any final questions or comments? If not, then I would have a question. Um, if I saw, if I remember the map right, Rodonia has a very long international border to, I think, Bolivia, if I saw this correctly. And I was just wondering, actually, I don't want it to make it more complex, but to what extent are cross-border issues, aspects also part of your research, actually? Or do you just focus then on the Amazon, the Brazilian Amazon states and Germany? Thanks. Mm. I'm not sure if I understood correctly, but I, yes, the idea is focus. I would not say only Aachen, <laughs> it's quite a lot already, <laughs> but yeah, between Germany and the Amazon states. But as I said, with a very specific and I mean, the, the deep analysis will be held on in Rondonia. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I answered the question actually. I was just curious. I mean, I think I don't think that the that the that the rainforest ends at the border actually, but goes over to the other side of the border. And I was just wondering how cross-border travel activities, etc., is somehow part of your project. So, um, that I didn't know. But if you say, I mean, I can totally understand that you do not focus on that because it just gets too complex. Then, if you also factor yeah. this, so 
Don't worry. So, yeah, indeed, it would be a possibility, but in principle, yeah, it's not a part of the idea, in principle, at least, but yeah. Okay, then thank you very much. We are coming almost at 3 p.m. That's wonderful. And we end this Tuesday talk wonderful by you, Luisa. Thank you very much for your presentation, which was indeed, I can only add, like Flavio said, it was wonderful. I can do something so beautiful. And then I wish all of you a great afternoon and that you can enjoy the sun wherever you are currently. Bye. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Special thank you to Cecilia. Uh, thank you. I learned a lot with you. <laughs> I say that. <laughs>